Hello, my name is Brad Inkrot. I'm the Division Chief of Spine Surgery in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Summa Health System in Akron, Ohio. Today, we'll be discussing a pretty extensive spinal revision case, specifically a cervical thoracic osteotomy that was augmented with Arthrex Allosync Expand DBM cortical fibers. This is a 53-year-old gentleman who's referred to my office with a significant amount of axial neck pain, hand weakness, and inability to hold his head in a neutral position. He had what essentially we call in spine surgery as a chin-on-chest deformity, where he's unable to have his head in a neutral position to maintain horizontal gaze. He works as a manual laborer in a local crossbow factory, which is important because of this significant inability to hold his head up causes a great amount of fatigue and neck pain throughout the course of the day. This patient also has a past medical history that certainly will affect our biologic choice, uh, most notably diabetes, sleep apnea, and hypertension. As mentioned, his previous cervical history, he did have a posterior cervical decompression infusion from the C3 to C7 levels, with notably a complete C3 and C7 laminectomy. On physical exam, as mentioned, he has a significant inability to maintain that horizontal gaze where his chin was essentially stuck on his chest, extremely limited neck range of motion, and probably most importantly, weakness in his hands causing him difficulty to hold and grasp onto objects. Preoperative x-rays essentially showed his previous hardware, while placed in a good position, did show those complete laminectomy defects all the way from C3 to C7, which eventually led to his significant forward migration of his head and essentially inability to hold his head in a, an upright position. In spine surgery, we call this position a chin-on-chest deformity, where you can see very clearly on his extension radiographs, even with maximum effort, it is difficult for him to even attain any sort of horizontal gaze. Advanced imaging reveals, again, that the hardware, while in decent position, did show that there was extensive foramal stenosis at the C7 T1 level, which was causing his hand weakness. And more importantly, you can see, even laying down, he had to have a bolster of pillows where he's unable to achieve any sort of cervical lordosis or normal curvature of the spine. Based on this, we had an extensive conversation on how to proceed. And given his quality of life was so miserable, he was unable to do his job, unable to live a meaningful life, we decided to proceed with the revision surgery. This was an anterior and a posterior surgery. Part one of the surgery was to perform what's called an ACDF at the C6, C7 level, and additionally at the C7, T1 level to perform a complete uncovertebral resection and essentially an anterior column osteotomy with a hyperlordotic cervical cage at the C7, T1 level. Then subsequently on the same day, we went in a posterior approach, exposed all the previous hardware, and did a revision fusion from C3 to T3, but more importantly, did what's called a Schwab II, or a posterior column osteotomy, where we completely resected the C7 and T1 facet joints to allow us to literally break this gentleman's neck in half and get his head back into a more neutral position so he could maintain that horizontal gaze. You can imagine, essentially, because we had to perform such an extensive osteotomy, this requires a very extensive uh, demand from our biologic of choice to get an adequate spinal fusion. Based on the technology of, and the osteoinductivity of the DBM cortical fibers, we essentially, based on the data, chose that the Arthrex Allosync expand fibers could provide a significant biologic boost to the local bone and provide us with enough biologic to achieve a solid fusion, this is a video showing how we mix these DBM cortical fibers, where the dry weight of fibers is injected into the kidney basin. You essentially have two choices. You can mix saline or blood with the expand DBM cortical fibers to essentially get the handling characteristics desired by the surgeon. In this case, we did saline, knowing that we would eventually mix the product with blood in the, in the wound itself. And this is a video showing the final product where you can see very nicely the handling characteristics where we can mold and keep that bone graft lateral to the screws, which was seen on the previous slide, which is very important in spine surgery because, of course, they're in a prone position in surgery. And when they stand upright, we don't want that graft to migrate distally into the wound. This is our two-week post-op follow-up x-rays, where traditionally these patients have a dramatic amount of pain, and it's very difficult in the first few weeks with post-operative course. In this case, this gentleman was very happy because his horizontal gaze was improved tremendously. He felt like he, didn't, he no longer had to work to keep his head up or his chin off of his chest. Uh, and then you can see our hardware is in good position at this initial x-ray. As we move out to the three-month follow-up, you can see the hardware has not moved. And additionally, at the six-month follow-up, you can see we have a nice beginning of a solid fusion where we can maintain that horizontal gaze. You can see a nice, what's called a chin-brow vertical access, where he now can not have to work so much to keep his chin at a neutral position. 
And we actually just saw this gentleman back recently for his one-year follow-up visit, and he's very happy with his clinical result. It has minimal, if any, neck pain, and as mentioned, the goals of surgery were achieved, and that his horizontal gaze was maintained, and his hand strength resumed and returned back to normal. Thank you.